Welcome to Never Shut Up. It's your boy Marcel Swally up in this. Oh, what's up, man? I had a good night last night. Shout out to Matt Barnes. We broke bread and had a good time hanging with the big homie. I only say big because he's younger than me, but the sucker way bigger than me. Love for you guys. What's bigger than both of us, all of us, is the itty bitties that we got to support. So make sure you go out there to projecttransition.org. Log on. Hook up the little itty bitty so they could be the best version of themselves. Simple as that. Now, let's use sports and entertainment and all those stories to tell our story. Let's learn it right now. Some life lessons. Okay, so Jake Paul is going to fight Mike Tyson. Yes, I found out that news like you guys this weekend. Uh, I found out through our school, the foundation at our school and our big gala. They were like, would this be an interesting ticket for someone to purchase? I was like, what is it? Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. I was like, ain't nobody buying that. You want to know why nobody buy that? Because that ain't happening. Ain't no way Jake Paul going to fight Mike Tyson. Oh, they really are. I saw the helicopter, little video and everything. I was like, whoo. Okay. Lot to cover here. Um, first thing I was thinking before I let y'all see what they were saying is, we know who Mike Tyson was. <laughs> So that makes us think we know who Mike Tyson is. All right, he's 55 right now, but point being, golly, he still could throw them hands. Jake Paul, whether he's on the rise or we were sleeping on him and now we are awake, like, damn, Jake Paul could actually fight. What's going to happen when Mike Tyson, as great as he is, still ain't Mike Tyson up there, is uh, coming here and Jake Paul is uh, going there. Where will those sheep, those ships meet in the ocean right there, right? So we try to figure that out. Uh, I'm going to let somebody who knows a little bit more about these uh, boxing, martial arts, all these kind of combat sports speak on it. Joe Rogan, uh, he was sitting there with Ric Flair and they were breaking this down a while back. Listen to what Joe Rogan was saying about this potential matchup. Just forget that Jake Paul is a YouTube guy and watch him box. Yeah. Kid can fight. And yeah. that Tommy Fury fight yeah. really showed that. Goes to a split decision against a legit undefeated boxer. The one thing he doesn't want to do is fight Mike. No. He wants to fight Mike. Woo! Why? Okay. I don't give a fuck if he's 55. Yeah. That's still Mike My, Tyson. Hey, Mike's in good shape, too. He trains with Rafael <laughs> Cordero. When you see him holding the mitts for Tyson, and Tyson smashing the mitts, yeah. like, Jesus. Yeah. That guy will hurt <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so that sets the tone right there. Now, he was talking a lot of what he sees from Mike Tyson in training and a lot of what he sees from Jake Paul in real fights. See the difference right there. We haven't seen Mike Tyson really fight in a long time. Not slighting Mike, but just saying there's a big difference between the mitts and going out there with some real hits and they coming back at you. I'm only saying this because there's some big lessons in here where we got to realize that dog, when them bullets are live, them bullets are real, it's a whole different animal. So that Jake Paul going against Mike Tyson, what we see, what we think? <sighs> I ain't there yet. Okay, let's talk about now Tyreek Hill enters the chat room. Why is Tyreek Hill enter the chat room? Simple as this. Everybody wants some smoke with Jake Paul. Let's listen to this one, how Tyree got into this combo. Talking about people that want to fight you. Tyree Hill's calling you out. What are your thoughts on that? I just think it's another Nate Robinson situation, and it's no disrespect to Tyree. He's a phenomenal athlete. Uh, you can play football, you can play basketball, but you can't play boxing, and he can be as fast as he wants, but he'll end up the same as Nate Robinson, which is turned into a meme. And if he wants to do it, we can do it. All right. Now it's time to button all this up. What Jake Paul is fueled with is the confidence of, oh, we got somebody who used to do this full time. And then we got somebody who doesn't do this anytime. <laughs> and they both want to challenge me because it's my time. Woo! That's a tough bet. What I like about this fight is the fact that we are going to mix past and present to see what it's going to be. I wouldn't bet 
on Jake Paul, but I'm not betting against Jake Paul because that's like asking me right now to get into some great shape, right? Nothing hurts. The hip ain't hurt no more. No more PRP, right? And I go out there and I see one of these young offensive tackles. <clears throat> now he a fourth round draft pick. You know, Jake Paul got undrafted. Let's go there. But he's balling. And all of a sudden they like, Wally, <clears throat> go against that dude right there. I'm like, what? Him? Oh, man, come on. I've been working out. I've been in shape. I'm back. I was never Mike Tyson. This guy may have never been Jake Paul. But I do know young muscles are different than old muscles. And I, I look, it's just different. <laughs> so if I really had to put a dollar on it, I say it goes the distance. They're going to play some games. I don't think Mike Tyson knocks them out. I don't think Mike Tyson beats them. I think they're going to go to like some split decision. I think it's going to be like that, split decision. Look at me, split down the middle. I just don't bet against youngsters, man. Y'all know me. I always think the next generation got us beat. <laughs> I always believe that. Like, it's the evolution of things. Oh, really? The microwave is better than what we got now? Hell no. Nah. Air fryer, way better. <laughs> Remember when you thought the microwave was going to be the best thing ever? She. Remember when you thought your home phone was going to be the best thing ever? She. Remember when you thought CDs? CDs. When CDs hit after tapes, I was like, it's rap. There's nothing better for music. Uh, what do you say? Digital? Like, what's this? It's on my phone? What do you mean? I ain't got to carry nothing? I just think Jake Paul is going to go in there with them young muscles and get Mike Tyson. Oh, as far as Cheetah goes, Tyreek Hill, man, get out of here. <laughs> Tyreek Hill just talking. He ain't no way Tyreek Hill going to do nothing with Jake Paul. All right, beat it up in the comments. Who y'all think going to win? I ain't lying. Like, I don't like to ride the fence. But Jake Paul, damn. And Mike Tyson, because I could tell, like, Mike, Mike still got it. And if he connect, and he got all the tricks, but man, old people, man, we old, man, we just different. We be thinking we feel the same. It look the same, especially in training in the mitts. He, you know, the combos coming. He know it. It look great effect. I can make some mitts look a little better. Get in that ring. That thing coming back at me. Ah, ah. We'll see. I know y'all gonna say Mike gonna win, but beat it up in the comments. Let me know what y'all think and what y'all think about Tyreek Hill. Y'all think he got a shot? Boy, stop. All right, he gonna get in there as fast as he is. It's as fast as he gonna get his butt up out that ring. Ain't no way. All right, let's get to this topic right here. Well, Cameron speaking on Drea and Jalen Green. All right, so they just had a baby. And, you know, congratulations on that and the birth of your child and new life into this world. I'm not here to poo-poo on that parade. I'm here to talk about hunters and gatherers <laughs> and those who seek uh, thy fortune, right? Uh, this just looks like from the outside, she got him, right? I don't know, Drea. I seen her one time when she was dating an old dude before. Uh, <laughs> that's the only time I seen her on the street. I was like, what's up? Because I, I knew a homie. That was it. I don't know her. I don't want to cast aspersion on her. I don't want to say nothing negative about her, but I'm going to talk about it. So first, let's let Cameron speak on this situation. Break it down, Cam. These young basketball players was kids, and they watched these bitches on TV growing up. It's like this, murder. It's like, wow. and I'm not saying, and I don't even know if it would be a stat, or if I would have a baby with this person or anything, <laughs> but it's almost like, yo, no, I'm back Felicia Rashad, right? <laughs> you, know, you know, I got Bill Cosby TV wife. If we was young, I'm talking about when we was 21 and 22. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I got, I got, I went and got Felicia Rashad. You know, I'm like, yo, bro, you can't get mad at the female, first of all. Second mm -hmm. of all, if Dre announced it, my question is this, did he co-sign it? That's the question. That's a good, that's a good, that's a good statement, Killer. It, what is he saying? Right, because, is he happy? Right. If he, if he likes exactly. it, pause. I love it. <laughs> right, exactly. You, you know, this may be an embarrassing moment because you got to realize the mothers of a 22 year old or, t or 19 at 25 is around, you know, similar to our age, I would say. And, and it's like, you got to realize, you know who we really would like to talk to? Jalen Green's parents to see if they approve. Because <laughs> they like, 
Mm. Yo, they probably like, you You're dumb right, motherfucker. No. <laughs> <laughs> what, what the fuck are you doing, my nigga? You know yeah. they're going to keep it. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if she have kids. I don't recollect her having kids or anything else. But she does. I do, you know. So, sorry, not to cut you up. off. Yeah, her kid's the same age as Jalen Green. Oh, I take I take exactly. that back then. I take that back then. Exactly. This is poor shot exactly. selection. This is poor shot selection. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> Niggas yeah. is shooting shot. This is poor shot selection. <laughs> Woo, we got to keep this one real. All right, this is all bad. Like, look. All right, so they, the kid, they're pregnant. They're going to have a kid, new birth into the world. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, I learned this from looking backwards from 49 years young, what I am now looking backwards. Uh, golly, golly, how many times I stepped in it. Thank God I could wash it off my shoes. Um, the mistakes I almost made, the mistakes I did make, uh, Marriage <clears throat> versus having kids. Marriage, parents. Dog, you know which one is the more of a commitment? You know which one is forever? Being a parent. Even being married ain't forever, as y'all know the stats, as y'all know the divorce rate. Even being in a marriage versus having kids, whole different love, whole different commitment. And that's no slight to marriage and your wife or your husband. It's just, damn it. I'm with you forever, forever. Not, I know so many people divorced right now don't even talk to their ex-spouse. Ask them how their kids doing. <laughs> Still riding with their kid. So Jalen Green being 22. She got a kid that's 22. That just says she's been in the game for a long time, right? Because it's one, you had a kid, raised that kid. That's a different father. And then... The kid you raised to become a man, you now going to look in his peer group. You're going to look at somebody with his same birth certificate year and say, yo, what's up with you? Now, I'm not going to raise you. I'm going to play with you. I'm going to talk to you. And we ain't talking on the same level because I raised this. Like, you imagine you going out there and actually building something up and then letting that go into the world. And instead of saying, okay, now, whoo, he gone. Where's my level? Where are my people? You go to that level. You go down there and grab one of them itty bitties and run that old lady game on them. Okay. Why I bring this up? Because uh, when I was coming out of college, I almost got caught like this. Uh, I was in love. I was in like, and my parents were upset, and they was going to get into it. <laughs> they hate it. My ex hated my ex. I mean, hated. And I think they really hated her for one reason. She was like 27. Still don't know that age. But she was trying to play it off like she was 27, probably older than that. I ain't trying to clown her or nothing like that. That's why I'm trying to keep it vague so y'all can't narrow in on her. Uh, but the point is, she was older. And I was younger. And this is when my parents were all in my head. But you know, when you're 19, 20, and they trying to tell you something crazy. And at that time, I wasn't pro-bound yet. I wasn't going to the league yet. But it was looking good. It was looking better every day. I was getting them real young muscles. Working out with all my boys back at home. Met her one off season. All of a sudden, I'm just, she got her own apartment. Uh, family good. She got her own Jeep. Taking me all around. Taking me shopping. Parents just looking at me like this. Yeah, all right. My dad kind of was more like, let the boy live. My, my mom was like, I'm about to kill his ass. <laughs> it's as simple as that. So then I'm, I'm lost in the sauce. And, you know, whoo, the love too good. I'm like, golly, I got a woman, right? And I remember the day when it all came to a head. My sister all of a sudden joined forces with my mama. So when my sister ain't with me, my mama could be mad at me. I'm like, mama, you just being protective. You just overbearing. When my sister ain't riding with me, that's when I'm like, I don't care who y'all are. When my sister ain't riding with you, we got some problems. That include my wife. <laughs> like, we got some problems because my sister don't read them wrong. So I'm like, damn. But I can't let go because it feels too good. And it's too good to me. And I'm going back and forth, New York. I'm in school. Like, what up? She ain't bothering me. I don't see her that much. My sister was on my head. And you know what? There was this one day. Oh, I think it was a USC football camp or something. We were working out at USC. And it was some pro dudes there. And I'm still in college, like junior, senior year. And I remember she came to pick me up. 
and them pro dudes was there. And I ain't saying no names because they're the homies. And they was like, oh, what's up? What's up? You know, I, <laughs> y'all know how the what's up be sound. He was like, what's up? What's up? When somebody double up, you know it's something wrong. Just like when you say, oh, I love, love, like, you know, something wrong. I was like, <sighs> then it was like, oh, and you know, you watching the hug and you watching the hug where the hands hit, they up top, they side, they down low, they slow, they y'all space. And I watched them hugs from the OGs. <laughs> Wait, and then she came over. First of all, you hugging these fools before me. I'm your man. Then she came over. She said, hey, baby, how you doing? And then, and then this is, I'm not lying to y'all, dog. When I gave her a hug, kiss, I'm like this. And I gave one little peek over there. And I swear, <laughs> look like that, that, that damn detective in Minnesota society. He's like, boy, you know you're fucked up, don't you? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm looking at them. I'm like, I can read that look. Because I done gave that look before. Like, oh, that ain't it. You don't know your girl like that. And I wanted to ask them, like, what's up? But how, how pay- I'm already 20, 21. And they already in the league balling out of control. Now, here I go, hey, excuse me. Did any of you guys ever, like, you know, see her at a party or, you know, take her somewhere? So I was just like. All right, I know what it is. Game recognized game. And then I was on a different, like, wavelength. I just kept looking, kept looking, kept looking. And I found it, I found it, I found it. And thank God I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. Because, Lord, this, um, this, Drea, this, Jalen, I ain't mad at that. It's just like, God dang, how old are you? Like, God dang, you mess with that. Oh, you men can do it all the time. Give me a man and a young girl. Let me go get his ass. I got a, I got a homeboy who just got divorced. I'm on his head every night. Like, dog, what you doing? And then he always buttercupping, always calling me, talking about, oh, guess what? I just met this one. 28, 17. <laughs> no, 17. Not 28. I'm like, what? Look, I'm like, oh, she look young as hell. What y'all talking about? He's like, we ain't saying much. Look at her. I was like, oh, God dang. Yo ass too old for that. So I saw this topic and I was like, man, I got to get this story off. It's crazy. And I was just out last night, and I was chopping it up with Matt. And it was so funny, because Matt's engaged, uh, about to get married. Uh, shout out to them and all the love. And um, <laughs> we both know somebody out there. Let, how do I say this? There's somebody out there who used to be active and is still active, <laughs> more active than ever. Because Matt, Matt's younger than me. so. Matt was like, yo, so-and-so. And I was like, yeah, because so-and-so tried to come get me a while back. And then, thank God, I was already in the league now, so I can, you know, I know the surveillance. I know all, I know where all the homies are. And they like, dog, she just told me that same thing. And I was like, I know, I know, I know. But look at her, man. <laughs> so, long story short, I end up saying, like, look, I can't date you. And it ain't because I don't want to. It's just because I can't. It's just, it ain't going nowhere. Yeah. It really was like, dog, I ain't trying to get caught up. I ain't trying to get in that trap. She's still running that trap. Real talk. Real talk. And I ain't going to say no more. I'm going to protect the guilty. Let her have fun. Uh, my last story with this is, there's, that Felicia Rashad stuff is real. Like, you grow up, you grow up with your fantasy. You grow up with somebody who just motivates you, just get you. Get you going, right? Janet Jackson was that. If y'all read my book, y'all understand how Janet Jackson, literally, just thinking of Janet Jackson, really, really like Penny and Charlene, because I was young. And I was like, man, she's so cute. Where's she at? She don't, she don't live by me. <laughs> like, she live in New York. Oh, no, no, she live in Chicago. Good times. I was like, wherever she lives, she ain't in L.A. And I used to love Janet Jackson. And I used to work out, you know, working out by yourself, concrete weights. Eight, nine, ten. Get 15, 13, 14. Uh, and I say, this for Janet. <laughs> I literally would say, this for Janet. Ah, 15. Rack them. It worked. I swear if I said anybody else's name, I wouldn't get that 15 rep. So funny stuff right here, man. Beat it up in the comments. First of all, who's y'all fantasy? Who, who helped y'all get that 15 rep? Second of all, it's just, I don't like this. I just can't even play like what? <laughs> oh, if MJ got if MJ got to the real world, working on Wall Street or in the league or whatever the hell he gonna do, uh, build Legos. So that's what it looked like. Um, and he came home with his mama age. 
Oh, I'm just, uh, cut the cameras off. I'll tell y'all what I do. Beat it, beat it up in the comments what y'all think about this. All right, let's get into this last one, man. These sports parents out here. Uh, this is a guy who I fully respect. Man, did y'all see this dude play in college? Yeah, his name is David Pollock. Y'all know who he is. He used to work at ESPN Beast. Uh, respect to him, but he had a great take on something I'm even guilty of, or at least suspicious in terms of uh, how close I get to that line. I'm very, very cognizant of not becoming what David is about to talk about. See, sports parents out here, yeah, we all around our kids, we helicopter, we doing a great job. We making sure they're in the best situations, best resources, best programs, got the best equipment, best coaches, right? We're trying our best. But the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So let's listen to David talk about how these parents are right now. It's amazing to me watching parents coach and go crazy and go nuts when how do kids learn by screwing it up, by messing it up. But then they get, you can't do this, you can't do that. And you're, we're yelling at them. And you know what I found is you paralyze them. We got to take away the fear of failure. No matter what you do, I love you. If you drop 50 or if you drop zero, if you miss 50 shots, I love you. Like, I love you no matter what. So let's not make those car ride homes. Let's not make them all coaching sessions. Like, oh, you should have done this. You should have done that. You ain't going to change anything. Okay. Hmm. That has been in my head from hello. And I know I'm guilty of breaking that, breaking that rule because when you're coaching and you're coaching your own kid, your kid does forget. And you will forget of that dynamic that is two ways. One, you're my father. And then it's going to look like Oh, you forgot that, and you just acting like my coach. You'll forget. Your son will be looking at you like, oh, that's my dad, and I forgot he's my coach. Matter of fact, the kid don't even know how to fill that in. Doesn't know properly what a coach is. So both of you guys are going to forget one of those roles, or it's going to get out of balance, which makes it seem like you are forgetting a role. It's impossible to be the coach and the father and not sometimes cross that line. I see MJ out there. He's not hustling. MJ, run. He takes off running. MJ jogs again. MJ, run. Now he's looking at you. MJ, get the ball, get the ball, get the ball. I would say that to Peter. I would say that to Tim. Get the ball, get the ball. Run, run. But they ain't got two things to think about. They only thinking about one coach said run run coach said get the ball get the ball that ain't my daddy but when coach is saying it and he's your daddy you're like yo daddy chill oh daddy ain't chilling because daddy coaching ah god dang it oh man can't win them all right can't win for losing what is it can't lose for winning <laughs> what the hell i hate it because I've seen that look before from MJ where he looks at me like, like he kind of like, Daddy, I want to do everything you say, but everything you say can't be done. We all had coaches. Coaches just always like, come on, come on, come on, come on. You ever run a 400 and your coach be, <laughs> my coach used to be on the fence at the end of the 300, at the end of that last curve, he sat right there. And then when he saw us coming around that 200 to there, he stand up, get right to that fence. Come on, come on, come on. Sprint, sprint. Do you hear my legs, coach? They're screaming. There's lactic acid everywhere, but he's sprint, sprint. And I remember how many times I dog cursed him in my head and how many times he also motivated me. But I never had to cross that with the fact that that's my dad as well. Mm, tough, right? Cause then, whoo, where's that dog cursing? Stop. You taking it home with you. Um, I am great, if not perfect. And when we get in the car, there will be none of that punishment that comes from not playing hard or practicing hard. All we say is before we turn on our iPad or watch the little TV in the car, hey, how do you think you did today? Good, great. You okay? How you feel? Good, great. Okay. Daddy saw this. What'd you see? Yeah, he was big. Yeah, he fouled a lot. All right. 
Turn, on, turn it on. Let's talk through it later. Let's have fun. I don't have those consequences with them in the car because that would kill them. You defeat the spirit then. That's all of a sudden when you start losing that inner motivation because you're looking outside like, dog, I'm doing this for me ultimately. And we're doing this together. But if you are now taking this beyond the court, beyond the field to every day, every moment of life, too much pops. I've seen them. I've seen them come into the league if they make it to the league. And as soon as they get there, uh, finally I can rest. I'm like, nah, you got to work there. <laughs> like, this is the league. This is the NFL. Todd Marinovich. Y'all remember that? You can't rest now. This is the time. And they burnt. They tired, boss. They exhausted. So all you parents out there who got those studs, chill. Like, let him, like, like David said, let him fall. Let him fail. And just be mindful. Because I know how hard it is. It's hard for me to even say it. When you're coaching, you are still their parent. You, you ever seen this look? Pick up the ball. Your son, your son or daughter like this? Because they like, yes, coach and daddy. Woo. That little spirit in them that's trying to grow and trying to show. Don't crush it. Don't do it like that. So tell me, man, what y'all think about that? I thought that was an amazing one. He nailed it. And I've seen it. I've seen it. It's in us. Like, you know, I've thought about doing crazy things. It's in you. It just can't come out of you, right? So that's in us. If you're a coach, you're always like, mm, ah, mm. You got to bite your tongue. You got to remember that's the itty bitty out there trying to blossom. Don't step on them. So beat it up in the comments if you're guilty. Beat it up in the comments if you're innocent. But damn it, you got some guilty intentions. <laughs> uh, or you see cats out there. Give me a couple stories of them fools out there doing it the wrong way. Let's beat it up. All right, y'all. Coming up next, Never Shut Up. We're going to funk up some comments at you with a while. Either. Get up out of here. Next, I'll Never Shut Up. Brinks TV and Reese TV. Brinks. Brink. I love you, MJ. <laughs> Welcome back to Never Shut Up. It's your boy, Marcel Swally. Ah, speaking of all them itty bitties, we out there protecting and showing love too. Make sure you do that through projecttransition.org. Log on, leave a monthly donation. I will send you that book. That's all it is. Let's funk up some comments, why? Funk up some comments, yeah. All right. I rock. Remember we were talking yesterday about Floyd Mayweather saying he rocked with his people first, but he messed with the Jewish community as well. Here we go. I rock with my people first and foremost because it's family. And my family needs to help. Like if your household doesn't have food, you're not going out and get food and then take it to another house to feed them because they need food too. You're taking care of your people. Got you. Um, you ever think about when you say your people, what connection that really is? And more importantly, don't you wish the connection was deeper? Like, your people, because they say, you know, all skin folk ain't kin folk, right? So we know that's true. Then you also know, damn, some of my best friends don't even look like me, right? So then it's like, so why should I subscribe to like, yo, oh, you black? We good. We, or we better. Or we're your priority, right? You, you, at, you at TSA. You at the damn check-in at the damn airport. And you like, all black people, go here. 
No, keep your shoes on. You can just walk through the scanners. Then you're like, everybody else, I got to check. Go through that line and zigzag like you had six flags in Disneyland just because of skin color. And then you're going to be like, oh, no, 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 no. Actually, you cool. You go through. Like, I just think I just think it's the biggest distraction in the world. This Tower of Babel. It's just people trying to act like, like, oh, we're going to build up our power. We all collect. And God like, look, y'all all going to look different. Y'all all going to sound different. Y'all all going to talk different. Figure out how y'all the same. Simple as that. So, I, I, you know, if I had a magic wand, I would say, uh, let's make this like a character connection. And I know it's harder. I know it's tougher to read. You can't walk in a room and just see somebody and go. <laughs> I remember I had this big argument over the black nod. You ever heard of that? Like people be nodding. Like, I guess every race has it. But the black people was like, uh, my people were like. And they said, yeah, I, I like it when I'm in, you know, when I'm in Wall Street or something. I don't see many brothers. And I go, I see one. I go. I was like, what does that do for you? <laughs> He's like, just let me know somebody else here with me. Somebody else here know me. Or I was like, he from New Hampshire. Like he, <laughs> you from, you from Linwood. He from New Hampshire, but y'all got what in common? What? What? And then you know what's so funny about it? I was clowning. I play devil's advocate sometimes. Sometimes I'll be like, yo, y'all, y'all sound stupid. So I'm like, dog. Then y'all start talking. I'm like, y'all don't even hang. I'm like, y'all went in a knot and we cool, we cool. We, yeah, mm -hmm. Then I was like, you hang with all them. <laughs> Silliness, man. I swear, it's some of the tricks of the status quo, tricks of society at large to keep things the way that they want to control them by keeping you distracted by the BS. Man, stop walking around here thinking y'all better off because y'all look the same. What? I look at my life and I tell people this all the time. It, it shocks them. I say, I have never, ever been hurt by a white person. They're like, what? I've never experienced racism. What? I said, well, first of all, fool, I grew up in all black neighborhoods. So guess what? All my fights, <laughs> black people. <laughs> all the times I got shot at, black people. Like, I'm just clowning, but I'm serious. Y'all got to understand, man, it's all good. We just don't want to admit, like, I like you, not I like it. Say it the right way. All right. Great subject matter. Oh, man, that's a good book right there you wrote right there. I like it. Um, appreciate you. All right, let's get to this one right now. <sighs> people are silly. I down to rock with others, but I do rock with my people first. It is important for minority communities to support one another to help build up your community. But I'm not going to support someone in my community just for the sake of supporting someone in my community. Having a huge domestic violence history is a deal breaker and a bad person to represent the people. Floyd, in this case, is not a victim of not receiving proper support by his community and in no place to question it. OK, you went a couple of different lanes. Um, I think it's an unnecessary step to say I rock with my, my people because we minorities and then say, but I don't rock with all my people because it's based on who you are. So why don't you make the assessment of who they are first instead of just what they are? I don't know. That's part one. Part two, yeah, uh, Floyd's situation with the domestic violence. I don't know the fullest of it. I don't think none of us do, but we do know what the headlines were. And actually, this is the craziest thing about all the stuff that goes on. Somebody lives a great life, great life, great life. And we know, especially with domestic violence, man, it's three, four, five sides to that story. Like, come on. Um, they together, like, you know what I mean? Whatever it may be. Now, I'm not talking in particular. I'm talking about when that happens. When do you have redemption? Whether we know right or wrong, you did it. Like, that's the problem with our prison system, our reform system, is that we never forget what they did. But if they paid the cost, if they did the time or whatever, or they got off because, frankly, somebody who read the entire transcript, the entire, uh, 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 all the talk about it, the entire, what do they call that thing? Uh, the entire uh, uh, allegation. They read it all in this entire, all 137 pages. I love when they do that. They be like, yo, it's 137 pages of transcript. You read the headline and you like guilty, innocent, and they have to read 137 pages of it and they say innocent. All right, I'm listening to them. All right, so the point is, I just wonder when do we let go of some things when we don't even know everything about that thing, that part. All right, let's get into this. A Wileyism, yeah. That's how we finish every show. It was memorable. I just don't remember it. <laughs> you ever been there? 
You ever had that? Boy, ain't nothing worse. This is the best argument you can have with your friend. I tell you right now. I'm guilty of it. Is have them say, oh, you don't remember? You ever had your friend do that? Oh, you don't remember? You know, <laughs> Man, we was over there. We were in Hawaii. And then we, we were on those scooters. And then we ran. And then we saw them people. Then we start trying to go this way. And then the police came. You don't remember? <laughs> like, what? We was in Hawaii. When? Dog, I don't know. Y'all can clown all y'all want. It ain't CTE. It ain't memory loss. It's just sometimes you, whether it's through stimulation, you can be built different. Like, you were like, dog. Okay, and then, then they jog your memory. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, it was memorable, but I just don't remember it. Now, that could be used. You could have homies coming up to you. You could have girls you used to know. You're like, and people come up to you all the time. I don't know how y'all roll, but I just cracked up. Somebody told me, yeah, it was memorable. I just don't remember it. <laughs> Has that happened to y'all? Please say I'm not alone. Because I'll be like, my wife all the time be like, yeah, we went to dinner with them, and they were great. And yeah, and then their cousin goes to our school. I was like, we went to dinner with them? <laughs> What's his name? And then it's so funny. And this is the worst part. So I'm not trying to be an ass when I don't remember everything, right? I hate when people come up to you and they're like, What's up? Oh, this happened at the Super Bowl. Woo, this dude came in hot. He had on a Gucci suit. This is why I remember it. <laughs> See? It was memorable. I just don't remember. He had on a Gucci suit. And he was like, What's up, Wiley? And he came me that, What's up, Wiley? Like he knew me. Not like, What's up, Wiley? I was like, What's up, man? He's like, oh, yeah, man, it's been good, man. I ain't seen you since blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I was like, really? When? <laughs> he was like, oh, you don't remember? Oh, I was like, dog, come on, man. You don't remember me from school? No, not really. <laughs> I was like, dog, it's okay. Like, just tell me or I'll tell you. I never come to somebody and see them be like, oh, you... You don't remember me? Like, I just think that's like, that should be off limits in conversation. Don't ever do that. Don't ever sun yourself like that. Like, come on, chill out. So I thought that was funny. Tell me, y'all beat this up in the comments. I know we don't usually do this on Wileyisms, but give me something <laughs> where it was memorable. You just don't remember it. That'll do it for today's episode of Never Shut Up. Oh, I'm crazy. I'm over here hot, sweaty. I got to stop doing the sauna before this show, but oh well. My day is done. I love it. Have a great day out there. Take care of them itty bitties, man. Show them the love they deserve. You know how it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Days a lot faster. <laughs> oh, I'm so honored. I'm so inspired to be here and thank Shine Global for this award uh, to be recognized for doing the right thing, to be recognized for doing good things and trying to inspire others for their own greatness. Um, I'm just a kid from Compton who uh, at an early age had to look inside to find my opportunities because on the outside, there were so many whispers and sometimes yells of, I couldn't make my dreams a reality. And I thought that was very unfortunate, but I was thankful that I never internalized that, that chorus that was around me. I was a kid that understood that you had to be greater than your greatest excuse. And I had a lot of excuses. I had a lot of reasons to have self doubt, but I was able to develop my inner power discover that inner power and make sure that I showed the world exactly who I wanted to be. And it was really simple for me. It was to make my dreams a reality. There was nothing more to it. And as I now stand here, just a few miles from where I grew up, where that adversity still is strong. And as we see through these movies, that it's worldwide, not just in our locale, you see the, the suffering, you see the gangs, you see the drugs, you see the poverty. And there's always one common escape. It's that inner power, it's that ambition. It's having a voice that's louder than those surrounding voices. And I'm on a mission, a global mission, to make sure that that inner power inspires all to not only give, but to receive the blessings that come from giving. 
And I'm up here right now as a guy who's challenging everyone to give their three T's. And that's time, that's talent, and that's treasure. Human capital, financial, whatever it may be. Let's invest in each other because we all have to coexist here together. And as I look around and I have a foundation that that really inspires these kids to become their greatest version of themselves and to look in the mirror to make sure that they're greater than their greatest excuse. It gives me my greatest passion. Uh, I was a kid who wanted to be a school teacher, but because of my height, weight, and speed, I became a football player. So I took the helicopter ride up as high as I could, but as I was ascending, I never forgot that I was once one of those fork in the road kids who was shot at many times who had to navigate around adversity every single day, who had to waste so much of his brain power just trying to get home every day, and so many experiences that sometimes you become desensitized to. But in reality, that is someone else's reality. So I'm so thankful to stand in front of all of you guys as, a, as an example of the kids that we're trying to affect, the underserved, the underprivileged, those who are told that their hardships are greater than who they are. But hopefully we can inspire them all to look inward because everything they want out there is already in here. Appreciate you guys. BetUS, America's favorite sports book, where you can bet on everything, anytime. Sportsbook, casino, horse racing, live betting, and more. We have the best bonuses in the industry. That's right, get a 125% sign up bonus and to celebrate our 30 year anniversary, we're giving up to 30 risk-free bets, a truck, Super Bowl tickets, and more. Don't miss out. Play smart. Join now. BetUS, where the game begins.